Did you know that you could not only increase your chances of selling your used pool table, but making more money off of the sale simply by taking a few tips from the online dating community? Well, stick around. I'll show you how. As an avid Facebook user, one of the best features that I think they came up with is Facebook Marketplace. And Facebook Marketplace combined with Craigslist, I think are two of the best platforms out there for buyers and sellers to get together. And you know, fundamentally, there is no difference between those two and an online dating service. The only difference is what's being sold. In one instance, you're selling yourself, and in the other instance, you're selling a product. You know, the online dating sites have gotten this stuff down to a science. How to get two people together. Well, if we take some cues from them, we can increase our chances of getting a buyer and a seller together. It's pretty easy, actually. When you go onto an online dating service, one of the first things that they're gonna have you do is fill out a profile and preferably upload some images. Well, guess what? That's your advertisement. That's you advertising you. And the better you are at describing you and presenting you, the better your chances. And the online dating services, they know this. So when you're going to create an ad on Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, do the same. With Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist, the only thing here is that instead of having the benefit of a questionnaire that you're gonna answer, you're gonna come up with all of the questions yourself and you're gonna answer them yourself. So you have to figure out every single question that is pertinent to that table. What's gonna set it apart and make it miles above anything that anybody else has to sell? The first thing you need to do is you need to take some good pictures. And I don't mean you have to go out there and go buy an expensive camera or set up lighting or anything like that, no. What I mean is make the pool table look as good as possible, okay? So, just like the online dating service, when you're gonna upload your pictures, you wouldn't wake up first thing in the morning and snap a picture of yourself where you've got terrible hair and crusty eyes and pillow marks all across your face where you look terrible. No, you wouldn't do that. Now, I'm not saying go out and go get glamour shots here. I'm saying make the table look decent. You wanna catch photos of yourself when you look athletic, you want to take photos of yourself, in the case of women or men, whatever, where you've got makeup on and you look presentable. That's what you want to do with your pool table. And you'd be surprised how many times I've gotten onto Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist and other websites where I'll see stacks of boxes on top of the pool table where the owner has just gone in and snapped photos exactly the way the pool table sits with no, no care whatsoever as to how good it looks. Well, you're setting yourself up for failure if you do that, or at least setting yourself up to where you're gonna get people that come in that don't really know what the pool table looks like. You're gonna leave money on the table when it comes to the sale. You're gonna lose out. So take the time to clear everything off the table. Get those boxes off of there. Get the old Christmas ornaments off. You know, take the laundry off of the pool table. If you watched my last video, I gave the tip of getting a handheld Dirt Devil vacuum. Well, break it out and start vacuuming down the table. Make it look presentable. Now, this isn't to say you want to lie about anything. The one thing you definitely don't want to do is be dishonest. Dishonesty gets you nowhere. Flat out nowhere. Let's go back to the dating site for a minute. Let's say you're a guy and you put on your profile that you're six foot seven, chiseled, 230 pounds, right? And come to find out you're really five foot nine, 220, 250 pounds, and you're, you know, the only shape that you have is round. Okay, when you meet your new date, it's not gonna end well. It is not going to end well. So the one thing you don't want to do is lie. Be honest. Be completely honest. Now, in the process of being honest, take good 
pictures. Take flattering pictures of your pool table, just like you would take flattering pictures of yourself. All right, so you've gone around, you've taken seven or eight really good photos of the table with it all cleaned off and looking nice and spiffy. And the old saying of a picture's worth a thousand words, well, now you've got seven to 10,000 words worth, right? Why stop there? Why not add the seven to 10,000 words? Or at least in this case, maybe a thousand. You want to be as descriptive as possible. Let the inner creative writer within you flourish. Why not? And I'll tell you another little key here too. Plagiarism is perfectly fine. This is actually a really good tip here. When you're, and this goes for online dating as well as selling your pool table, go around and check out your competition. If you're a guy and you know, you're putting yourself out on, on the online dating community, go around and check out some of the other guys' profiles. See what they're saying about themselves. See what they're saying about themselves that also applies to you, that maybe you didn't think about. Make sense? Okay, do the same thing with your pool table. You wanna go around and you wanna look at all of the other ads, you wanna see where they fall short, and you wanna see where they excel. You want to take the cues from where they excel and leave out the parts where they fall behind and make your ad as wonderful as possible. In the process, you want to be as descriptive as possible and you want to point out everything that makes that table fantastic, makes it worth that person coming in to look at it and possibly buying it. If you do that, half of the battle is done. Oh, and by the way, the people that end up showing up at your house to look at and consider buying that table are much more inclined to pay the price that you want for it. You've taken the time now, you've taken the pictures, you've cleaned up the table, you've taken the pictures, you've been very descriptive. You should also rehearse everything that you're gonna talk about to your potential buyer. You wanna know that table inside and out, or at least everything that you've said about it. You don't want to be caught saying, uh, I don't know. But if they ask you a hard question, something that you hadn't addressed, don't be afraid to say, I don't know. What you should do is direct them towards a pool table mechanic or pool table professional. This leads into my next point and pretty much my final point. You know, buying and selling, the act of buying and selling is supposed to be a mutually beneficial situation, a mutually beneficial relationship, not unlike that dating site. And it doesn't matter whether you're only together for two or three days until the transaction is completely done with the pool table. It's also, it also transpires into relationships that are 40, 50, 60 years long. It needs to be mutually beneficial. So, if you're selling your pool table and there's any red flags that your buyer brings up or that they start talking about, you need to shut it down. You need to step back, step away for a minute and don't let the money influence you into making bad decisions. And what do I mean by that? If your potential buyer says that they want to move the table themselves, you are opening up the door to having well, your door damaged, your floors damaged, your walls damaged, your pool table damaged, someone getting damaged. In other words, someone could get very hurt very fast or someone dying. This is something you want to steer clear of completely. And this is one of those massive red flags. Another red flag. Now, I don't mean to get all ominous on you or anything like that. But another red flag would be when somebody's trying to beat you down on the price of the table. You don't have to take that, okay? If you're confident in what you have and what it's worth, you don't need to let someone beat you down on the price. And again, if you've done all of the other steps that I've already talked about here and you know your stuff, you don't have to get walked over and you don't have to accept less than what the table is worth unless you're in a position where you have to get rid of the table. One thing that you really do want to do is make sure 
that you give yourself as much time as possible to get this done. One thing, and look, is it mutually beneficial? Yes, I'm about to tell you a story. I bought a pool table one time where the customer called me up and I'm the seller. They're not my customer at that point. I'm a buyer, they're a seller. The person called me up and said they had a pool table they were wanting to sell. They wanted $900 for it. Now, in the process, you know, I, I knew that they wanted $900 for it, but I also knew that I was not about to pay $900 for that table, let alone any table. I don't pay that much for tables. So I had gone out and I was going to take a look at it in hopes of getting the table down to less money. And if I couldn't, I was going to walk away. But the buyer, I'm sorry, but the seller made the mistake of telling me that the act of sale was going through on the house the next day. Now, you can call me unscrupulous. You can call me immoral and taking advantage of people, but it's really not taking advantage of someone when you're removing a table out of their house the day before an act of sale goes through, okay? You know, it's not the buyer's problem that you waited so long to get this done. Now, same situation, going back to my story. This person made the mistake of telling me that the act of sale was going through on the house the next day. So I knew from that statement that table needed to be out of the house one way or the other and that they were much more inclined to take whatever I offered rather than what they wanted to get for it. Now she wanted 900 and I'll tell you, I ended up walking away buying that table for $150. So if you don't mind throwing the money away, then sure, wait till the last minute or possibly throwing away the pool table, then yeah, Wait till the last minute. But if you want to maximize the amount of money that you're going to get for that table, give yourself time. Time is money. You know, you don't want to take the first offer that gets thrown your way. You don't want to get taken advantage of. You don't want somebody coming in and lowballing and, and using the fact that you put yourself in a poor position. So don't put yourself in that poor position to begin with. You know, if you follow the steps that I've laid out here, number one, you'll probably decrease the number of people that are gonna actually come out to look at your pool table, but you will increase your chances of selling to those remaining people that do come out. They're gonna be better quality buyers. That's what you're after. You're after better quality buyers that can spend a bit more money. And you definitely don't want to put yourself in a position where you're forced to take less money than what the table is worth. I hope this video has been of some help to you and maybe giving you some insight to look at things from a different perspective now and then and maybe take some cues from other aspects of life because you know you'd really be surprised if you really think about it how much life is intertwined and how one thing relates to another and how one thing correlates to another and there's direct analogies that can be found in so many different aspects of life and looking at something else looking at one thing may change the way that you look at something completely unrelated just like online dating and selling your pool table. Like I said, I hope you found this video at least entertaining and hopefully I've given you some information that you know you can use to your advantage. If you like the video, please do me a favor and hit the like button down below. I, I love seeing the thumbs go up. If you don't like the video, tell me in the description down below why you didn't like the video. You know, I've got a at least one person that you know, I'll, I'll upload a video and within one minute of them starting to watch the video, they hit the down, the down, down vote and they never comment. But at least I know, you know what? I'm occupying a, per a place in that person's mind. And you know what? That means I'm making a difference. Even to that person, I'm making a difference. That makes me feel good, even if they don't. So. Again, if you like the video, 
hit the thumbs up. If you don't like it, write me a comment down below telling me why you don't like it and telling me how I can improve these videos. I'm still new to YouTube. I know I've been here a little over a year and I'm doing my best to create some good content, but I need some feedback from you guys. Please tell me what kind of videos do you want to see? Do you want to see more pool table type videos? Do you want to see me do some more leather working videos, shoe related videos? Help me. I really want to hear from you guys. Look, again, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next video. Sign up. They, they want you to make a profile, and a profile is nothing more than an advertisement. Advertisement? Advertisement. Well, the, the, well, the British way of saying it is an advertisement. I'm not British. Crikey, I'm not British. Did you know I'm not British? Yes, Nigel, you are not British. Yes, did you know that you can take cues from the online dating community here in Liverpool? Did you know? <coughs> Did you know you could pick up your, your lady at Hortense just by going on to the online dating there in Liverpool? Maybe London? If you're really special, maybe Cardiff. Oh, I'm going to try not to make a laugh then. All right, man. Heaven forbid I make a laugh.